This is a vi video about an optimization problem in a pre-calculus class, so we're not using calculus. And this is one where we're gonna have to use a graph to solve this. So here's the situation. We've got a rectangle. It's constructed to the left of a parabola as shown. So it's to the left of this blue parabola. It's tops on the line y equals four and the left-hand side's on the y-axis. And the question is, what are the dimensions of the largest rectangle? And the parabola itself is y equals 1 fourth x squared. So first, before we do any algebra, let's just make sure we understand there's an infinite number of rectangles we could draw. Here's, of course, you were given one, but it could look like this. Or it could look like this. Or it could even look like this. But let's go ahead and just use this one to help us define our variables. Now you should have done some optimization problems already where you were looking at quadratic word problems, problems where the function that you ended up with was quadratic. This one is not going to be a quadratic and it has a different step four, but the first three steps are all the same. We're going to draw a picture and label it. We're going to determine the focus. We're going to get it in one variable. Maybe you need a constraint. The step four is going to go ahead and use the graph. So we're going to use technology to help us answer the question. All right, so we still need to go through the steps, draw the picture and label it. Of course, we have the picture given to us, but we need to label it. Whenever you're given a function or a graph where you have a formula for it, almost always you want to label the appropriate point or the relevant point. This, this corner of the rectangle is important. And we'll just label that x, y just normally. And then the question is, or the thing to realize is, what does that mean? It means this length from here to here is x, and the length from the point down to the x-axis is y. And if that's y, then this length right here is 4 minus y. And we've labeled our picture. Just realize that this length of the rectangle is actually x. And we're done with step one. So step two, what's our focus? And remember, that's what you want to minimize or maximize. I went ahead and zoomed in on the rectangle because we care about the rectangle because the focus is the largest rectangle in terms of area. We want to maximize the area. So we need a formula for the area. And given our picture, it's actually a quite easy one. Area is just the length times the width. The width. So x times 4 minus y. And that is our focus. Now on to step three, we want the focus to be in terms of one variable. Sadly, this is an X and a Y. There's two variables there. We have to fix that problem. So we need a constraint equation, but they actually gave it to us in the picture. Here is the relationship between Y and X. It's just Y equals 1 fourth X squared. So we're going to substitute that into the focus. And when we do that, we end up with the area that looks like this. It's got one variable, the X, and now we can actually graph it. But before we do, let's talk about the domain. And this is important because one of the biggest problems students have is actually getting a graph that looks right. But understanding the domain helps. So of course we are gonna graph it, that is step four. Can you see that there's no way that X could be bigger than four because that's where the parabola and the Y equals four intersect. So X has to be between zero and four. Also, there's no way it's going to be more than 10 units because just looking at it, even the one I've got looks like the, the length is about three and the height or width is about one and a half at the max. And that's not even close to 10. So my point is you're not going to have a really, really big numbers on the area axis. So we know that this information is true. We don't really need to go through that process, but it helps in terms of drawing the window. And this would be a really good scale for our axes. X, I have it going from zero to five. I know it can't be bigger than four, but I, I often go past a little bit just so I can see everything. And also my area goes up to 10. This would be a good window. Also, before we go any further, make sure you realize that this area right here, this area axis, of the bottom graph, it's not the same thing as this axis. They're two different things. What we care about this axis here is the area of this dark blue rectangle. They really are two different graphs. 
Anyway, back to a good window. This one would be really bad. I mean, look at the X. It goes all the way up to 800. There's absolutely no, no way that X is anywhere near 800. So if you were going to graph that, you'd just be looking at this little tiny part on the left-hand side. That's a really bad window. And even though this isn't horrific, going up to 40, that's still too big because you know your graph's only going to be in this area in the y-axis. So don't, don't make it so your graph is really tiny. So back to the good window. If we graphed it, it would look like this. And again, I'd expect you to use a calculator or Desmos or something of that sort to help you graph this. You don't have to graph these by hand. And then you need to ask the technology, which you do it different ways depending on what you use, uh, what this high point is. Just looking at it, you can see that it's maybe two and a third is the X value and the max area looks like it's a little bit bigger than six. Uh, I went ahead and used Desmos and found out the coordinates of that point and we're done with step four except for choosing the correct value for what they're asking and what they're asking is what are the dimensions of the largest rectangle in terms of area so it's important to realize and remember this is x in your picture and the 6.158 is the area here's the rectangle we care about we found out that x was the 2.3 but i don't care about the 6.158 i care about this length and there's a variety of ways to figure that out. We know the length is 2.309. The other dimension, since I know the area, I can figure it out because the length times the width is supposed to be the area. I know the length is 2.309. Whatever that width is, the 4 minus y, when I multiply those two numbers together, I get 6.158. And solving for the width, that's 2.667. And we are done with this problem.